Hello, I'm Bill Ritchie. As some of you might know, I'm interested in artist asset management and legacy transfer. That's because I'm an artist with a legacy and I have many assets and I need to know how to transfer them in the ultimate time of my passing. And so I spent a great deal of my um, time in, in our studio, which you can see behind, uh, figuring out what to do with all this and do it in such a way that's creative and um, productive and particularly educational. My main aim is youth, youth education. And because I come from the field of with a uh, background in printmaking and having studied multimedia in the process, I've decided that the best thing for me to do is to connect my my assets, uh, my prints, my works on paper, um, uh, my sculpture, um, I'm looking on my screen. All these things could be combined in a kind of game, I think. And so today I happen to be looking at another approach to artists' assets management and legacy transfer and it came across a service uh, called uh, FOSS I believe I'm not sure but I'm going to show some images on that screen and I'm, I should warn the viewer that this is partly for my own elucidation my own education uh, in other words when I look at all the images on the screen from this uh, uh, asset management system uh, I notice that I can't know or learn anything about the pieces that they're showing except that if I drive there to to the to the uh, auction or the uh, sale house sale a uh, garage sale if you will uh, I know ahead of time what's there for example there one of the most important images is a George Sudakawa watercolor and I would make a beeline to that watercolor and try to buy it depending on what the price is that they put on into its uh, estimated value. But to me, there's so much more to art and so much more uh, enjoyment and interactivity that's possible in this age of digital reproduction and interaction. Look, for example, at games. So to me, the ultimate thing is to turn the artist's asset into uh, assets in a game, some kind of a game uh, thing and I don't mean only a physical interaction that is buying the artwork and then hanging it in your house but uh, where youth are concerned particularly globally there must be something more possible and this is just an effort to collect one idea one example and uh, to give frankly to give myself something to think about well let's see if I can switch over now to a view of what's on the computer screen and I'll show you that site. Here's the site uh, as you can see estatesales.net and this is uh, helped or put together by the FOSS appraisal service as you can see here and here begins the uh, showing a very brief description of the details. I think if I could, this is the Sudakawa watercolor I mentioned. Here you get a close up of the Sudakawa watercolor um, painted in 1965 and then a, a measure, a, kind of a ruler that shows you what, how big it is. And then we go through quilts and library book, a book of, a, li a library of books, um, a couple examples of, of some of the books in the library, a desk, um, and on and on and, and this this goes way 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 down looks like the traveler they've been to Bali it looks like Indonesia bought masks uh, I think there was mention of them being a world traveler and they apparently have a, a special interest in Japanese woodcuts there's a whole lot of uh, Hiroshige and Hokusai woodcuts shown jewelry um, all kinds of things. This is an interesting, um, it says Bennett, which is, it says of Hoquiam, that's uh, the famous Elton Bennett who made all the silkscreen prints, obviously did some relief prints too. Anyway, 
Uh, my point is, uh, legacy like all this stuff and those artists that were trained in the 70s and 80s to use multimedia and went on being very productive, there's so much more that can be done with an artist's legacy than simply move it off to a auction company or a house sale company to manage uh, disposing of the work. There's so much more. Here's another part, a list of description and details. And you can scroll down and read each one. This is a similar that most artists uh, have, either in good order on a spreadsheet or a database. Here's a print by M.C. Escher. A lot of works of ink on paper. These apparently are all artworks. I, when I look at it, they don't see the, show the uh, pictures of uh, clothing and books. Well, in my humble opinion and in conclusion, the weakness of this uh, process, it's a, been going on for over hundreds of years, is that there's no uh, equivalent, uh, there's no use of new technologies to not only uh, re re um, retrieve or develop the value of these things, uh, or to provide any educational uh, value at all. And when it comes to young people, they deserve to be shown what's in it for them. And because they've spent so much time using new technologies and video games and those kinds of things, and in addition faced with the potential of STEM or STEAM education, science, technology, education, uh, engineering, arts, and math, that a combination of an artist's estate to raise money to develop an arts-related STEM or STEAM experience. And of course, in my own theory, in my own planning here in Seattle, Washington, is to convert everything in this gallery, the mini art gallery in Seattle, the holdings of my legacy, my family property, and convert it into a multimedia program that uses these artworks as a launching point, uh, as parts of a game, let's say. I mean turning um, this sculpture by myself, painted by Marianne Peters, and that into um, a stock, if you will, uh, a share, an investment, in a development of a company that produces multimedia interactive STEAM products and services, particularly for young people, but also for seniors and all those generations in between. Well, thanks for watching my little exploration this morning. Again, my name is Bill Ritchie.